Hello, everybody. Welcome and uh, thank you for joining us today. You are part of the 250 people worldwide who have registered to this webcast powered by your development, Benek and System Plus Consulting. This webcast is entitled Smartphone Camera Trends. My name is Faisal Kamasi. I'm a global sales support and coordination manager for your development. Before we start the webcast, let me give you some basic information on this online event. You have the possibility to submit questions during all the webcasts. You can use the ask a question window at the bottom of the screen. We will answer as many questions today as we can. And for the remaining one, we will follow up with you via email. Concerning the materials, please note that the presentations are already available and they can be downloaded from the resources section at, of the platform. Furthermore, you will receive tomorrow an email with the link to the recorded webcast session. So let's start the webcast. I'm pleased to welcome uh, the three speakers of this webcast. Pierre Combou, Principal Analyst Imaging at YOL Development. Dr. Miko Soderland, Semiconductor Sales Director at BINEC. And Audrey Larache, Technology and Cost Analysis, MEMS and Display at System Plus Consulting. How three speakers will share with us their knowledge and expertise. I'm pleased to welcome as our first speaker, Mr. Combu. Pierre, the floor is yours. Thank you, Faisal. And hello to everyone. Uh, um, welcome to this um, market and technology brief on uh, smartphone camera trends. I will uh, spend 10 minutes um, covering the major trends uh, for this uh, very important uh, device, uh, which uh, uh, you uh, have on uh, on the back and on the rear of your smartphones, and which is uh, constructed uh, really uh, upon the CMOS image sensors chip, uh, but not only chip, uh, optics, uh, and uh, many other uh, mechanical elements, uh, such as um, uh, autofocus and optical image stabilization. Um, and uh, new to the new to the sub uh, components uh, illuminators uh, for three D uh, cameras. So um, more uh, precisely, uh, this uh, construction uh, is uh, usually uh, so. so the, there is a, a flex rigid substrate, or, or could be a ceramics with connect connectors. Then on top of that, uh, image sensors. So this is typically um, the semiconductor um, uh, device uh, that uh, we uh, monitor here at your development. And on top of that, uh, actuators, uh, actuator drivers, which is also a semiconductor um, chip, metal chip, metal shields, higher cut filters, which is uh, also um, asking for uh, layer depositions, and we will have to, uh, today uh, a, a description from, from Benek of some of the tools that are being used for, for such. Uh, actuators, lens set, again, um, uh, plastic molding uh, parts, but, but also uh, using um, uh, anti-reflective coatings. Uh, uh, lens mount uh, on top of that uh, to 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 finish the enclosure. So in the end, uh, module assembly has become a, a huge industry, and we will uh, see some of the trends uh, underlying trends. So why did it uh, became uh, uh, such important uh, industry? Uh, initially, uh, CMOS camera modules were um, invented. Uh, to serve, um, or actually, the, the the technology itself was invented for webcams, and really, it uh, had it was um, 
the, the, the growth was on the back of the computing and the computers. So here in this graph, you see the volume of, of computers being uh, produced uh, every year. And uh, actually, uh, there is another um, trend, which is the digital camera uh, trend uh, that became uh, the dominant way we, we were taking pictures uh, by 2000. Uh, was in the range of uh, a few uh, tens of millions up to uh, 130 million uh, cameras by 2012. So all this got disrupted by, by smartphones. And really, this is why uh, the camera module industry uh, became so huge. Uh, is because of the numbers, uh, the m numbers of camera of uh, smartphones uh, reaching uh, 1.5 billion in uh, 2016. Uh, since then, uh, we have hit the ceiling; uh, it's going down, but uh, cameras are, are still uh, increasing. So let's go a little bit more uh, discussing the numbers of uh, cameras. Um, so first, we need to look at the number of smartphones. Uh, we just mentioned that it was a ceiling around 216. Uh, since then, uh, the volume has been eroding, despite all of our uh, forecasts. We thought optimistic forecast. And now we, we think, for example, for 2020, uh, even though the COVID-19 uh, got uh, a big hit on, on, on most of the industry, we still believe um, 1 billion to 50 million phones will be produced uh, this year. Because of the recession, we think even less uh, in the two next years, but then uh, growth should resume. Um, for cameras, uh, this is uh, not, uh, we don't see any recession because the number of cameras per phone is increasing. Uh, before I, I, I go to the, yes, so, and it is increasing primarily uh, due to the strategy of the main players. And here we are just discussing the main players, Samsung, Huawei, Apple, Xiaomi, all of those uh, OEMs have embraced multiple camera approach. And therefore, uh, from one, we've been uh, going to dual triple uh, camera uh, setups. Uh, and, and, and therefore, here is the volume we, we get for, for camera modules. So the order of magnitude is uh, 6 billion. So this is really an uh, impressive number and the growth around 8% per year. So we still uh, think there will be a slow, slowing growth in the, the few, next few years. But uh, again, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is still 8% uh, 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 growth, which is uh, really nice. So this is mainly, uh, so the, the orange is the, the mobile. And you can see, in terms of volume, the rest is uh, less than 10%. Uh, uh, but it will, uh, it will increase a little bit. It will move toward the 15% if we, uh, if we consider the, the, the revenues. So now let's look at the underlying uh, technology trend that is uh, powering the, 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 the industry. Uh, first, a, a small discussion on the image sensor. So image sensor, uh, CMOS image sensor have um, transitioned from front side illuminated to backside illumination. And then more recently uh, from uh, stacked uh, TSV, so, so through silicon vias, so to, to do the connection with the top and lower wafer. And then uh, more recently, uh, hybrid stack. So you can see that uh, what makes it very special uh, in terms of technology is the, the, the color filter array and the micro lens array on top of the technology. So those are. Um, organic uh, elements and uh, uh, or uh, the next presenter from Benek uh, will explain how uh, to make the position of, for example, anti-reflective coatings on top of those micro lens, uh, organic micro lens is a, is a key uh, 
uh, is a key enabler for, for this uh, technology. Therefore, uh, in terms of production, uh, I mentioned the 6 billion uh, camera modules. Uh, now, in terms of kilowatt per, per year, uh, we are talking 12 inch equivalent. So this is, uh, we are talking in the range of uh, uh, 2.7 uh, uh, million uh, in 2019 and reaching uh, 3 million in 2020. Uh, the growth is 6%, so it's less uh, than the volume of modules because um, there is the stacking. So I'm just talking the top part. Uh, actually, if we think of the, the whole um, semiconductor content, it is uh, increasing uh, quicker than volume. We, I mentioned the 12-inch equivalent. Uh, now there is a, a, a split. There is a market mix between uh, eight, 8 inch and uh, 12 inch, so 300 millimeter and 200 millimeter. So right now uh, the CIS industry is um, bringing more uh, capacity in 12 inch, most. Uh, but it is also uh, there is an interesting uh, market for 8 inch. And uh, actually, in terms of uh, just uh, revenue and volume, it is increasing. So uh, there is ad added uh, capacity in 8-inch uh, too. So if we look at the, the so this market is really a, a performance driven. Uh, we have not gone to the to the old days where it was really cost driven uh, between 2000, 2005. Uh, now we are really performance driven and uh, the key driver is to improve photography uh, image quality. Uh, it is to uh, be able to to integrate the camera uh, flawlessly into the, the smartphone. So the aesthetics is uh, super important. And last, um, uh, to use those cameras as a user interface, uh, this is the 3D, uh, 3D sensing, and also the optical fingerprint under display uh, type of cameras. So this is the last driver, very important, in, in especially last year. So if we count the number of cameras per phone, I was mentioning uh, initially, uh, it's, it's really uh, rising uh, uh, sharply. So uh, we are beyond uh, three uh, cameras per phone in average. Uh, some phones have uh, four cameras on the back and uh, two to three cameras on the front, uh, taking into account the, the, uh, the optical fingerprint. So we expect this number to, to rise uh, and to reach uh, five by uh, 25. So if we have to summarize the different trends, uh, uh, so first talking about the past, so um, 10 years ago, uh, the, the, the goal was really to in improve photography and, and video. Then uh, more recently, uh, by having uh, high quality cameras uh, on each side and, and high uh, resolution. Uh, more recently, uh, to improve on specification and image quality uh, and also provide uh, uh, this uh, uh, human uh, machine interface, uh, then we had a, a multiple camera trend. Uh, in the future, I think the 3D, 3D cameras will be more and more integrated and uh, the need for under-display camera will, uh, will rise. So this is already the case for, for optical fingerprint. And in the future, uh, the integration of other type of cameras, um, more than 3D, go beyond 3D. Um, other type of uh, spectrum maybe. Uh, and also the ability to, to use AI upscaling. So let's discuss a little bit uh, last uh, this 
key trend of AI, I think, is uh, something that uh, will have a huge impact on, on the CMOS uh, image sensor and also the cameras. Uh, because uh, to put um, computing next to the chip or uh, next to the, to the image pickup device is, is uh, super uh, important and the decision will, will, will be made. Either to move uh, this computing away uh, using 5G or uh, to keep it close and, uh, and use uh, maybe um, computing uh, within the image sensor. So this is, will be the big uh, decision and uh, we'll see both actually. And uh, this will transform the way uh, the, the, the image sensor are, are designed and the way camera modules are made and being used. Therefore, here is my last slide. Um, so far, uh, camera module uh, was uh, industry was dominated by the proliferation of cameras, uh, especially uh, in the number uh, of uh, cameras per end device. We had more of the same. Now uh, there is a large diversity of, uh, of application and technology, and uh, uh, Audrey will show you some of the diversity uh, we've seen uh, on the market, and it is providing uh, more momentum to the to the camera module industry. Right now, uh, the camera modules are preci very precise optoelectronic components. Uh, they contain many subcomponents, uh, image sensor, lens, actuator, and assemblies, multiple assemblies, um, IR filter, VXL, uh, I, uh, driver ICs, uh, hole sensors. Uh, this is really connectors. This is ma making the, the ecosystem extremely rich. Uh, we have uh, reached uh, kind of a climax in terms of, of, of uh, complexity, and um, I think uh, uh, it's going to be difficult to find the next uh, step and probably uh, disruption. Uh, I mean, the industry is really ripe for, for disruption at this point. Uh, this is uh, my conclusion, and uh, Faisal, uh, maybe we can move to the next uh, presenter. Yes, thank you very much, Pierre, for your presentation. Um, now, yes, as Pierre mentioned, let's now welcome our next speaker, Dr. Soderlund, if you please. Thank you, Faisal, for that uh, introduction. And uh, good morning, evening, afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this webinar also on my behalf and also Benek's behalf. Um, first of all, really appreciate the nice um, technology and, 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 and market analysis uh, shared by, by peer. Excited to see, um, obviously, the trend of increasing amount of, of uh, cameras coming into mobile phones, even though the uh, pho phone business is, is dropping a little bit, because that's really, and, and also addition of, of sensing on, onto these uh, uh, mobile phones, because that's really driving technology innovation. Um, for my talk, um, I want you to switch your heads a little bit from, from the market and technology onto a wafer level. So we're going to talk about uh, thin film coatings. And, and, and those of you in the audience who are, you know, essentially looking at how to further enhance, improve the, 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 the sensor technology and some of the optics, um, I think this should be attractive, especially if you're looking at, at um, you know, improving, uh, the, the, let's say, controllability and precision of your thin film coding. So um, in your deposition as a, a, as a uniquely qualified uh, solution for, for those needs. I'll start with the similar uh, explosion image as, as Pierre was showing from, from Oppo and, and with a, a few little less details on that. But, but what you see always is a, is a set of optics and at the core of it, at the heart of it, is the is a sensor. Today we're seeing some of that optical functions being brought onto the wafer surface. So I'll talk about that too. Uh, generally, the the interest here is is further to improve, and this is kind of my my challenge and opportunity slide. So is to improve the dynamic range and sensitivity of these uh, devices. You know, have have better low light performance, increase signal to noise ratio 
prolong the sensor uh, lifetime by, by encapsulating it. Um, there are more organic elements, uh, both in a sensing as well as in optics coming into play. Those need to be protected also. And, and then, yes, you know, integration uh, in chip scale uh, uh, for, for that, for these applications. Uh, this is a little features and benefits slide. Um, LD is a, is a gas phase process. I'm sure most of you have heard about that and know that that's used in advanced memory and logic. Uh, courtesy to the sequential process, it's really gentle uh, deposition process. So you can imagine doing that also, for example, on organic layers. Um, it produces very dense pinhole-free coatings uh, uh, with extreme conformality as well as precision. So control and precision is something that I want you to remember from this talk, if nothing else. Um, we can do that process in, in a fairly wide uh, deposition temperature range. So I put here 70 degrees C to 400. It also means that you can then essentially choose at which phase of, of your uh, production flow you do that. You may do it in higher temperature in, in a wafer level or at the later stage in a, in a packaging level. Uh, it comes with the easy process control, repeatability, and, and um, we can reach significant throughputs by essentially batch processing. So not processing one wafer, but 25 wafers in what we call a mini batch. Um, very important for CMOS image sensor is the, the ability to, to, to control the materials. We have not a massive selection of materials, but a few nice oxides and nitrites, and we can pretty flexibly uh, um, you know, mix them and laminate them to produce uh, desired and targeted properties. For example, Rechtavgi index, uh, a specific charge of the film, density and, and stress and, and so forth. So I'll give you a few examples as we go along. Just want to quickly on those images to show, so these little berries on, on the plate that you see, these are actually kind of, kind of a few hundred nanometer sized uh, polymer spheres, which have been coated with aluminum oxide. You can see really that, that the coating is, is conformal. Then the land laminates pictures hopefully comes through in a, in a larger image. You see uh, two oxides, high and low index, uh, running through this, this nano, nano uh, uh, shape very conformally around that. And the high aspect ratio essentially showing that we have the same coating thickness at the top of a trench and at the bottom of, of the trench. So that just gives you some, some indication of, of the, let's say, power of that technology. So where does it come to play in, in, in the backside simulated CMOS image sense? So we go now onto the very surface of, of the silicon on the backside. Uh, there are three uh, applications, three layers that I'll talk about in more detail. First one being the, the passivation of, of that sensitive surface to improve efficiency. The second point is an antireflective coating. Again, the silicon uh, surface would be reflecting quite a bit of that incoming light on, on, unless you do something about that. And, and then as a third topic, I'm going to talk about barrier coatings. Again, these are the layers that come a little bit later. So um, you typically have your, your color filters and, and optics on, on wafer. And we would be protecting, protecting that stack as well as combining it with an anti-reactive coating in, in one go. Um, Going quickly to, to the uh, backside passivation topic. So the pass passivation actually serves uh, two functions. There's the chemical and field effect passivation. Chemical meaning that we are essentially reducing the defectivity on the surface. And you may choose a, a specific film based on that, that requirement. Field effect passivation comes into play as you deposit, for example, aluminum oxide having, having a negative fixed charge. And that's going to help you drive some of these uh, 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 photo generated uh, charges into the silicon and, and away from the surface, away from recombination, hence improving uh, efficiency. Um, ALD performs well in terms of the other other um, uh, processes uh, available in terms of the efficiency, in terms of bandwidth or wavelength of operation. And, and you know, best of all, it's easy to combine the passivation layer with, with a, a capping optical layer, essentially to, to, to combine passivation and an anti-reflectant uh, function, which I'm going to talk about here. Um, so again, these are all sitting on top of on the backside of the silicon, passivation, and on top of that, in, in its simplest form, it will be just a high index layer uh, with an index in between uh, air and silicon that, that will help 
to drive the light into the, uh, the silicon. We have some uh, nice oxides uh, with ALD, uh, silicon dioxide being the, the lowest of index and titanium dioxide being the one with the, the highest index. So anything in between you can actually do by mixing these materials either by layer by layer or, or laminates. And then there may be you know, other rationale for choosing uh, depending on the wavelength of operation. For example, if you're looking at, at very much shorter wavelengths, not for cameras necessarily, but for other applications, you might be choosing hafnia over titania, which has some UV range uh, absorption. So again, um, it's, it's all about um, uh, you know, control in terms of these material properties. Also, ALD has excellent precision on the coating thickness. So you can imagine doing uh, a 200 millimeter or 300 millimeter wafer with excellent uniformity and, and doing multi-layer stacks in, on top of them being well controlled across that, that full surface area for a, a specific targeted uh, anti-reflective coating, coating uh, performance. Um, then another optical application is when you would be then applying uh, an optical element on top uh, of, of your uh, pixel. Uh, so this would be, let's say, wafer level anti-reflective coating, uh, you know, the image on, on the left-hand side from, from Sony is, is describing kind of sub-pixel architecture where they have a, uh, an, an optical element top essentially collecting uh, efficiently light onto that specific pixel. And you see that really is a 3D shape. And if you wanted to apply an anti-reflective coating on, on that, you know, you would be challenged with some of the existing technologies out there um, or other alternative technologies. Again, I'm pulling, pulling this image I showed before on this sphere. Again, aluminum oxide deposited at 80 degrees C is a able to very uniformly coat uh, a sphere all around that. With, with nice coverage. Why is that relevant? Well, if you look at the right-hand side image about uh, showing the reflectance, um, you know, uh, a conventional technology would be giving a right target thickness on a direction D, but then if you go 90 degrees C, 45 degrees C to A and G, well, you know, your coating is 20% uh, thinner uh, and you're not gonna get the, the AR function you want. Whereas with ALD, that's gonna be uh, conformally coated everywhere as, as demonstrated by, by this nice paper from Pfeiffer from, from Vienna. Um, the third topic I wanted to touch uh, upon uh, in more detail is the, the encapsulation or, or moisture barrier. Again, there's various things on, on image sensors, the plastics, but also some organic sensing layers that you want to be protecting for the lifetime of the device. And, and really, with ALD, what we're doing is, is combining kind of best of uh, both worlds. We could take an aluminum oxide, which is a, an excellent uh, gas barrier, and combining that with, with some other oxides like zirconia, hafnia, and titania to essentially improve the chemical resistance. And we, we do what we call a nanolaminates here on the left-hand side image you see. And when you do that, you're, you're essentially generating uh, uh, excellent uh, uh, moisture barrier. So we can reach down to... 10 to minus 6 grams per square meter per day, moisture barriers at thickness is less than 100 nanometers. That may not say anything to you, but it's as good as glass. So it's the same as you would capping your device with glass, except for ALD, we talk about such thin layers that are not really adding to the weight or, or shape of the device. So, so, you know, that's a completely new way of, of essentially packaging devices. Um, we actually started on this through OLED, and that the image is, is showing an OLED dip on water, so I don't recommend to do that, but you could do that with an ALD layer and have it uh, uh, sustain uh, lifetime performance. Um, what I didn't mention is that this process, the encapsulation, the results here are all done at 90 degrees C. So again, this is compatible with, with organic, most organic materials uh, that, that you might be con considering using. It also means that, um, again, you could be doing these uh, coatings on a wafer level, a later stage in a module level, or even uh, in a later phase as you package the device, uh, because you know, some of these materials may be sensitive to, to high, high temperature. Um, given some more time, I would like to dive in deeper also here, where, you know, some quick examples about uh, designs where you're essentially looking at a higher, uh, higher surface area of silicon, either by, by generating some kind of defective light trapping pixels or 
essentially using black silicon, a more of a futuristic topic. You can obviously see with these structures as well as the, the capacity trench isolation that, that what you really need is, is a conformal coating technology to, to you know, start to enhance the properties of, of such devices. On the same class, of course, in terms of the aspect ratio is a true silicon via uh, uh, for the 3D integration where, where LD is obviously being, being used also. Um, good news is that there is a, a tool out there that can put it all essentially together, and we're proud to present um, Benek Transform. That's that's the, the cluster tool, AD cluster tool that we've introduced, specifically designed and engineered for the for the more than more uh, markets. A few uh, unique features on that tool is is really the versatility in, in terms of combining different processes, thermal batch. Uh, together with uh, single wafer plasma processing and, and a large number of modules essentially to, to increase the tool capacity, the productivity. We have a little module there on, on the cluster tool to, which is used for preheating the wafer. So we turn the ALD tool really into productive element. It's not furnace to, to heat up the, the silicon, but, but really to do uh, the, the LD processing as soon as the wafers are, are loaded in there. So that gives a massive throughput increase. It's a fully fabricated tool, so it com comes with an automation, uh, um, anything between three and eight inch, and, and obviously a large share of, of the uh, image sensors in, is today in, in 12 inch. We are delivering modules already, and a full solution with, with handling everything is, is, is coming out the uh, latter part of, of next year. Um, in terms of the processes, so that's what you saw before. They are implemented on, on the transfer tool, uh, the common oxides. And, and some of the nitrites, even for TSV applications, and 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 generally, uh, you know, the tool comes with these processes with with you know very good uniformities, less than one percent one sigma um, within wafer, wafer to wafer, and 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 batch to batch. Um, I should mention there are two versions of that: a light and a larger one, uh, which essentially gives you more flexibility for a number of modules. If you're lo really looking at large quantity of wafers. Then, then that's that's your tool to 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 chew the transform. Um, to give you a feel, I mean, many people associate ALD with with slow and expensive. So I want to wash that out by by giving you our, our promise in terms of throughput for a single module. The example gives for 50 nanometer aluminum oxide, which would be a, a decent decent uh, film for passivation encapsulation, uh, as well as uh, optical element. So the single module is generating 15 wafers per hour, and obviously you can add more modules to to increase on that that capacity. Um, last but not least, for for those of you who are you know getting excited and thinking about that's a nice technology, you know what what where where else are you using that? Always the advanced memory logic is the the core of ALD2, the large part of the market. Just wanted to quickly show you that that in addition to the the CMOS image sensors, Benek is active in in growing markets such as power devices, RF filters, RF ACs, and and photonics. And photonics obviously is now connecting very much with mobile phones too. And for those markets, uh, again, we are providing film films for high K materials, passivation, uh, nucleation seed, chemical barrier. And you know, encapsulation is a very common theme across the di different technologies. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and, and pass pass the torch to the next speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Solander, for this very interesting presentation. It's time now for our last speaker to share her knowledge, Mrs. Larache. If you please. Thank you. So good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to present you the last part of this webcast. So I'm Audrey Larache, and I am a display and some sort cost analyst at System Plus Consulting. And today I will present you the latest, the latest technology trends on flagship smartphones camera. So let's start. Uh, first of all, I want to present to you this little graph where we can show the number of visible camera modules we have in each smartphone since 2016 in the three main OEM, Apple, Huawei and Samsung. So I select uh, the best one series for each OEM, P-series for Huawei, iPhone for 
Apple and Galaxy for Samsung. So as we can see, there is an increase of the, num the camera numbers. Um, to show you the last trend, I select the three last uh, high-end smartphones from the three main OEM. So iPhone 11 Pro from Apple, Galaxy S20 Ultra from Samsung, and uh, P40 Pro from Huawei. We don't have uh, the iPhone 12 now because it's really the, it's scheduled this month. On this, uh, on this slide, uh, there is the release date of each smartphone I have selected. We can show there are four visible cameras in each smartphone, three on the rear face and one on the front. On the rear face, there are three cameras with the same function, so uh, one main camera, one wide angle camera, and the last telephoto camera. We have open each smartphone and their visible camera. This uh, double pie chart show what we found in each camera in terms of proportions. So we have four cameras per smartphone. The circle in the outside is divided in three equal parts. And in the middle, the pie, ch <coughs> the pie chart corresponds to the proportion of the number of CIS manufacturer we found. So Sony represents the three, three quarters, and uh, the last is uh, from Samsung uh, manufacturer. Uh, this slide show you which manufacturer uh, the OEM choose to integrate in, in his smartphone. For Apple, there is uh, always a Sony CIS uh, for visible uh, cameras since many years. For uh, Samsung, they integrate only Samsung uh, semiconductor. They want to keep it internally, but uh, in the last smartphone, the Galaxy S20 Ultra, the telephoto camera, uh, placed on the rear face used a Sony die. Uh, maybe for integration reasons, I talk more about it after. Um, for Huawei, two years ago, they used uh, mainly CIS from Sony and a little from Omnivision, but now they integrate only Sony's uh, sensors. Just uh, as a reminder, I'm only talking about a visible camera here, not 3D camera. With uh, this both uh, schema, we have a big part of uh, process used in CIS smartphone today. So Sony used uh, since many years uh, only uh, copper copper hybrid bonding. This technology has the advantage to permit to do connection directly under the pixel, and this allowed to have a better ratio pixel array per die area. For the Samsung process, they must do the connection with TSV outside the pixel array. So let's go to the next slide to illustrate this point. Yes. Here we have two similar CMOS image sensor, but for different manufacturer. On the left, we have Sony, and on the right, this is a Samsung sensor. The two CIS are uh, similar in terms of resolution, around uh, 30 megapixels. Uh, pixel size, in terms of pixel size, sorry, uh, 1.4 micrometers and uh, technology node 2 for the logic circuit, 45 nanometers. So the TSV area, which is outside the pixel array, is circled in red color, so the TSV uh, TSV required um, more space. The diarrhea is impacted because uh, we see that we have about uh, 45 square millimeters for the Samsung's die against four, uh, 40 square millimeters for the Sony one. 
the pixel array represents uh, 68 uh, percent of the diarrhea for the Sony against um, 53 percent for the Samsung die. There is two CMOS emission circle section with the uh, same view to show Sony process on the left and Samsung on the right. So we can see on the left the 3D stacked BSI, uh, so backside illumination with copper copper hybrid bonding from Sony, whereas the micro lenses of the pixel array is on the top of the copper copper connection. And uh, on the right, the 3D stacked BSI with TSV from Samsung, where uh, the photo has been taken outside the, outside the pixel array. On the top of the red line, there is a pixel array circuit, and below there is a logic circuit. In the last two years, uh, some OEM has begun to integrate a telephoto or periscope camera in their smartphone. We found it in Huawei and Samsung smartphone. Between both, this is the second year we found it in Huawei smartphone. Samsung has integrated it is, uh, uh, only, only this year. Um, the telephoto camera is composed of lens and spacers with a CMOS image sensor like standard camera, but with a prism additional and a bigger uh, package. This type of camera permit to have a big zoom that is not possible with standard camera because uh, in smartphones, the integration is the first selection criterion. The camera will be thicker than the smartphone. We, with this solution, OEM can integrate a camera with a much larger zoom. So the particularity uh, is that the CIS is turned at uh, 90 degrees compared to the, the other CIS, and uh, the light on turning the camera by the prism. And um, the area of the packaging is around twice bigger. So uh, this, this uh, last uh, slide, to recap all information we have uh, seen, three big points. So the number of cameras per smartphone has increased uh, this last five years. Sony is the main CIS manufacturer today in the high-end smartphone for the larger uh, OEMs. Uh, with this technology, uh, copper copper hybrid bonding and uh, the telephoto camera has uh, appeared in some smartphones. Maybe we will find it in the next uh, iPhone, but uh, we must wait uh, a little for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Audrey, for your presentation. Uh, we will now end up this webcast with a Q&A session. We will answer as many questions today as we can and follow up via email for the remaining one. So we receive quite a lot of questions. So I've got one question for Pierre. Um, how do you see the trend in smartphone ID regarding the camera bump on the backside? Will market still accept it in the future? So, <laughs> very nice question, very difficult question. Um, so, I mentioned in the in the presentation that there was, uh, I mean, the, the, there are two, uh, three drivers, but uh, two that are connected to the question. Uh, either uh, will will OEM uh, prefer uh, to boost the image quality and have a bump, so to have a bigger camera module. Uh, or uh, do they prefer to have a, a flush surface and to to remove the bump and uh, prefer the aesthetics? So we we have seen both uh, approach uh, on the market, and uh, so far uh, the, the the thickness of smartphones is actually increasing, 
uh, and the bump uh, is uh, still uh, remaining and therefore uh, we can just observe that uh, yes uh, it's here to stay uh, we also see uh, some uh, players uh, trying to remove the, the, the bump uh, I'm thinking uh, Xiaomi for example or LG uh, so it has no uh, direct impact on the um, the trend of uh, of the OEM uh, I think my opinion is we we, we keep on uh, seeing both uh, and as we've seen the increase in thickness so uh, a few years back we were decreasing and then increase again uh, my expectation is we could see at some point uh, going back to slimmer smartphones uh, definitely and then uh, pressure on the reducing the bump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Priya, Thanks. for sharing that. Thank you. Uh, one question for you, Miko. Uh, is it possible to do uh, the optical multi-layer multi stacks in one process module, or do you need two separate modules? Well, that's a good good question. So. <clears throat> Uh, yes, yes, it is possible to, to use just a single single module for doing two different materials. Obviously, we need to be matching the process uh, temperature. But out of the list I, I showed for high and low index materials, we can always find a combination of high and low index ma material deposited in the same temperature, and hence allowing just use, using one module for that. So yeah, that's possible. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's continue with you, uh, Miko, one other question. What is the role and benefits of the preheating modules? Oh, the preheater. Uh, yeah, I, I went through that very, very quickly on the on the tool side. So um, that's essentially there to to uh, heat. I mean, we are doing a, a batch process to, to reach the rates that we talked, like 15 wafers per hour for 15 nanometer aluminum oxide. So, um, you know, that comes through um, courtesy to us heating each individual wafer before we load it into the, the reaction chamber. If we were to load them cold, it would take maybe one hour uh, for wafers to heat up. Now, instead of that, with the preheater, we can load and heat them in a 15 minutes and then then do the process in in a little over 40 45 minutes and hence come with the throughput so the effect of that the importance is, is actually more than 50 percent in terms of the wafer per hour that the tool delivers so the important module okay interesting thank you uh, audrey one question for you uh, do dyes with similar characteristics between samsung and sony have the same manufacturing cost um, no, they, they don't have the, the same manufacturing cost. Uh, so two two points. Um, the cost of the process uh, hybrid bonding is uh, cheaper than the TSV process. But for the moment, uh, the yield uh, may be um, lower. And the uh, Sony have a, a die smaller than the Samsung with the same characteristic with the integration of a connection the, directly under a pixel array. So um, Sony uh, die is uh, cheaper. Okay. Uh, another one for you, please, Audrey. Have you found sensors that incorporate older technology such as, such as the uh, BSI standards? Yes, we found uh, it uh, sometimes. Uh, but uh, not in the high-end uh, smartphone, uh, and uh, generally uh, just in the in the front uh, camera, so little resolution. Okay, thank you. Um, another question for you, Pierre. Um, uh, Vivo X50 introduced micro gimbal stabilizer and rumor. Uh, sensor shift in coming news iPhone. Is it the same? And uh, what do you see about this market trends in the future? Yeah, I think the the stabilizer is, is you know, part of this uh, OIS uh, autofocus uh, um, that we've seen uh, being introduced. Uh, there is a, a race uh, there. Um, 
I don't think it's going to be uh, this time for for Apple. I I know uh, they they will introduce uh, very advanced changes. I don't think it's this time. Uh, I think this time is going to be more uh, a fourth camera and uh, direct time of flight. This is my expectation. Mm. Introducing uh, more camera uh, is uh, extremely complex. So at the end of my talk, I was mentioning uh, disruption. So is there a possibility that we could shrink all those cameras together uh, and using maybe MEMS or uh, liquid lens? Uh, I don't know. Uh, there is there is uh, opportunities in this direction um, and. Uh, which would use a different uh, kind of uh, strategy than the OPPO. Uh, uh, but uh, yes, the, the trend is, is actually uh, very vivid, and uh, I think we will see a lot of innovation in this direction. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Uh, we still have a question, but the webcast is now over. So we will answer the remaining question by, by email. Uh, and we'll do our best to do it as soon as possible. Um, you will soon receive an email with the link uh, to the recorded session. Also, please feel free to share the presentation with colleagues. Finally, please let me remind you that you can find all our reports on our website, www.i-micronews.com. Do not hesitate to contact us if you have additional questions. You can find our contact details on the last slides of the presentation. Thank you all for joining us. Have a good day. Bye-bye.